began, I was a part-time student minister at Redcliffe Church of Christ, a full-time soldier, and our little girl Chloe was not yet with us. So a lot's changed. I was a young man just starting out in ministry, and it was definitely a new season of my life. For me and my family, it's been a great blessing to us ever since. Now as I get set to depart seven years on, as an ordained minister, my family and I are tremendously grateful for the opportunity that this church has provided me to grow and develop as a minister. And I know that my experiences here over the last seven years, God has been shaping me and refining me to undertake the next season where God has called me to serve as an army chaplain, which I'm tremendously thankful for. And as we look back on our lives, I know that each of us can pick out milestones along the way, can't we? Times that a new season of life began. In fact, going forward, if we stop to consider some of the poss possible future events, I believe we could see some new seasons of our life approaching. It's with this in mind that I thought it would be appropriate to speak this morning about new seasons. That is because reality for each of us is that we face new seasons regularly in our lives and this is not something that is new or unique to any of us. In fact, the author of Ecclesiastes Solomon wrote these words nearly 3,000 years ago. Sorry, just before I get onto that. That's some Bible passages I'll be referring to. These are the words of Solomon wrote nearly 3,000 years ago. In Ecclesiastes 3 verses 1 to 8, there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to be healed. A time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. You see, everything has a season. And we know that new seasons continue to come, but the hard part about that is accepting change. See, entering a new season means that we must accept change. Every new season brings changes. Just like the seasons of the year, a new season means a change to our lives. Many of us have some sort of love-hate relationship with change, don't we? Yeah? See, we don't like monotony, but at the same time, change can be scary, can't it? And even though change can be scary, we've got to realise that these changes will happen and we have to accept them. So sticking your head in the sand is not going to help, nor is wishing that things hadn't changed. To give you an illustration, I use my current family situation with Jerry's deployment. So we've just entered a new season of our life in our home. With Jerry away on deployment, the house is sure a lot different with me being the sole parent for seven months. Now I'm thankful that my mother will soon be up to give me a hand and that our all pair Winnie is with us. But our family dynamic has changed for each of us. See, family dinners are different without Jerry. I miss being able to talk to her about what was happening in our lives on a regular basis. While we miss her dearly, I know that this season isn't, is important for the long term. Even though I'd like her to be around now, I know that this is an important season for her to undertake. Knowing that God is using this season not only for Jerry to have a unique and rewarding military experience, but also using this season for me to grow as a responsible father to my children and grow in my loving appreciation for my wife. And for Jerry to grow in appreciation and love for her husband and children knowing that absence makes the heart grow fonder. I know that more change will confront our families in the years to come. So I 
accept the change even though it's hard. Understand that it's ultimately best for her and for us in the long term. But it is through my relationship with the Lord that I'll not only understand and know these things, but it's through that relationship that I'm strengthened and steady during these times of change. Because I have a God who is unchanging. Hebrews 13 verse 8 tells us that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. See, Jesus doesn't change. And when we're dealing with changing circumstances and new seasons in life, it's vital that you have a rock to cling to, isn't it? Something certain. That rock is the Lord. And it is vital that we know him and grow in that relationship with him. Knowing his words that we can have peace amid changing circumstances and the uncertainties of the future. King Solomon. See, Solomon was the writer of those words in Ecclesiastes that we heard earlier. And in his lifetime, he had to accept a lot of change in his life. This morning, we're going to look at just a few events in Solomon's life to get a perspective of some of the things that we might expect as we enter new seasons of life and consider how God uses those new seasons in life to grow us. If you'd like to turn with me to 1 Kings 2 verses 1 to 3, let's take a look at what King David, who was on his deathbed, says to Solomon. And consider how this helped Solomon deal with the new season of life that Solomon was about to enter. It says in 1 Kings 2, verses 1 to 3 When the time drew near for David to die, he gave a charge to Solomon his son. I'm about to go the way of all the earth, he said. So be strong, act like a man, and observe what the Lord your God requires. Walk in obedience to him and keep his decrees and commands, his laws and regulations, as written in the law of Moses. Do this so that you may prosper in all you do and wherever you go. It tells him to be strong in the Lord, he is to walk in his ways and keep his commands and decrees. You have to keep them and be strong in them. Solomon has got to know them, doesn't he? But if you're going to be able to accept the changes that life brings your way and be steady and strong in the Lord, then you've got to know the Word of God, don't you? So you can walk in His ways and keep His decrees. Without knowing God's Word, we're going to have a hard time dealing with change that comes our way, aren't we? Unless we get to know the God that is unchanging. That you are closer to the Lord will help us because we will know that God is in control and that He is unchanging. First, we need to devote ourselves to learning the Word. So, changes will come along with the new seasons of life, and having a growing faith in the Lord will help us to be able to accept those changes and prosper during those times. But not only are there changes, but entering a new season brings challenges, don't they? See, Solomon had changes going on. The death of his father, a new role as king. And with these changes, he had to face some challenges. How is he going to face them? Again, if you'd like to look there, you can turn with me a couple of pages to 1 Kings 3, verses 5 to 9. Let's read what it says. Again, in 1 Kings 3, verse 5 to 9. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon during the night in a dream. And God said, Ask for whatever you want me to give you. Solomon answered, You have shown great kindness to your servant, my father David, because he was faithful to you and righteous and upright in heart. You have continued this great kindness to him and have given him a son to sit on his throne this very day. Now, Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father, David. But I am only a little child and do not know how to carry out my duties. 
Your servant is here among the people you have chosen, a great people, too numerous to count or number. So give your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong. For he, oh sorry, for who is able to govern this great people of yours? See, Solomon had an awesome and challenging task before him, leading the people of Israel, filling the giant shoes of his father. How was he going to face that? He faced it with the wisdom of the Lord. So we need wisdom to face the challenging roles that come our way when we enter new seasons of life. Being king was not only a change from being a prince, but he was going to, it was going to be much more challenging, wasn't it? Not just a change, but a challenge. So you might well be asking yourself, what are some of the new seasons in your life that could be challenging? I heard just before as we were doing announcements, the young fellow said that he was getting married. Well, with the married folks here, you would know that marriage is great. At least some of you would say that. I hope most of you. But the truth is that it is much more challenging, isn't it? It's more challenging to do with what two people want than just yourself. So it comes with challenge. Becoming parents. See, becoming a parent is much more challenging than babysitting your nieces or nephews, isn't it? A job change. Changing job brings new challenges in learning new things. Maybe it's moving. I can certainly relate to that at the moment. Moving to a new area brings challenges of meeting and establishing relationships with new people, which can be scary and challenging. Perhaps it's of a child that goes off to study somewhere else. Well, maybe going to university is challenging both for the child and for the parent. See, many here today, I'm sure, are facing new challenges. How are you going to face them? We need to face it like Solomon. <laughs> face it with humility and seeking the wisdom of the Lord. James 1 verse 5 says, If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all, without finding fault, and it will be given to you. <clears throat> so we need to seek God's wisdom during times when we find ourselves in challenging situations. Be in prayer and asking for the Lord's wisdom. Pray, Lord, how is it that I should be teaching my child? Lord, what do I need to be doing in my marriage? Lord, give me wisdom to be in being a leader at my workplace. Lord, how should I glorify your name in serving you? We need to be praying and asking for the Lord's wisdom. But our need for wisdom is also another reason to be in God's word. Because there's a lot of wisdom for living in the pages of the Bible, isn't there? Do you know what happens when we aren't praying and we aren't growing in our knowledge of the Lord through his word? Do you know? Throw it out there for anyone. Well then we deal with changes and challenges in our own wisdom. And I'll tell you what happens when we deal with changes and challenges in our own wisdom. We get stressed out in life and frustrated with those around us because we find that we are unable to control all the things that are happening and they never go according to the plan that we have mapped out for ourselves in our heads. We are not only stressed and frustrated, but we worry about the outcome of acting in our own wisdom because it is so uncertain. In that stress and frustration and worry, we create further problems in our relationships that did not need to occur but do occur because we're acting in our own wisdom instead of in the wisdom that the Lord provides and that we can ask for. But when we are praying and growing in our relationship with the Lord and relying on Him and His ways, He will give wisdom and strength to act in that wisdom, along with the peace that surpasses all understanding. 
knowing that God is supremely able to work things out for his glory and for our good. So when we're in that position, accepting change and facing challenges in God, in God's strength and wisdom, we often find and learn that entering a new season is not something that beats us down, but instead we find that entering a season can birth new champions. Let me say that again, entering a new season can be a time to birth new champions. Again, if you turn over a few pages to 1 Kings 8, verses 10 to 14, Solomon had accepted the changes and faced the challenges in the wisdom and strength of the Lord and God used him powerfully. Did God use Solomon to build for himself the temple where Israel would worship for years to come? In 1 Kings 8 verses 10 to 11, when the priest withdrew from the holy place, the cloud filled the temple of the Lord and the priests could not perform their service because of the cloud. The glory of the Lord filled his temple. See, that was because Solomon accepted the changes that came his way. He faced the challenges that occurred with humility, seeking the Lord's wisdom as he continued to move forward. He was able to be used to do mighty things for the Lord. With building the temple, God was pleased. His presence which filled the temple showed that. But maybe you're thinking, I could never be used to do anything great. I'll never be a champion for the Lord. I can't deal with change and I'm overcome when facing challenges in life. Perhaps you have been trying in your own strength. The key to becoming a champion for the Lord is submitting yourself to Christ. When we submit ourselves to the Lord in our daily living, trusting Him with the changes that go on, and humbly seeking Him in the challenges we face, He gives us new opportunities to be used in greater ways. And the reality is that God wants to use everyone in this room. And He can use everyone in this room. But you need to humble yourself and submit yourself to Him first. And maybe you're sitting here today wondering, what is it that the Lord could use you to do? I don't know. Maybe you've been called to volunteer in the church, to serve on the eldership, to lead a Bible study group, to preach the word, or to be a Christian presence in your workplace or at home, or to show the love of Christ to a neighbor, or countless other ways. But as I look back on my life, there are a few decisions that were made that are clear times of entering a new season. But there are countless, small, seemingly at the time, inconsequential decisions that brought me to those decisions that strengthened me in making them. Today, as you consider the new season God is guiding you into, pray that God will help you in making the small decisions walking in the ways of the Lord on a daily basis, so that as the Lord brings you those new seasons of life, you will have the strength, wisdom and confidence to enter that new season, accept the changes, face the challenges, and become a champion for the Lord. Before I finish today, it would be remiss of me not to say this. I would again like to express my heartfelt gratitude to you all, I've appreciated the love and acceptance and encouragement that this church has been to me and my family these past seven years. I believe firmly that God has used this season to shape and mould me to be the man and minister who's called me to be. And I pray that I've been able to help you in your faith journey along the way. It is a season that I'm very grateful for having undertaken. And as I step into the next season of my life and ministry journey with great excitement, it is also with great anticipation and look forward to hearing what the next season will bring to Caboolture Living Hope Church of Christ. Thank you and God bless you all. And you.